Hello everyone, it's Nancy Amato, the Be More Stamper. How are you today? I hope you are having a great day. Today is Saturday, July the 8th already. I don't know about you, but we're still having fireworks going off. It seems like every single night <laughs> in the neighborhood. So I guess this is going to be like the entire Independence Day week or something like that. But anyway, even though it is really hot and humid here, we are going to be learning a new technique today using the snowflake stamp from um, the Season of Chic Dyes, which is on page 40. I'm sorry, not the dyes. Holy moly. The Season of Chic Stamps on page 40 in our annual catalog. And today I pulled out the snowflake, even though it's July and it's hot, but I wanted to do something that would coordinate with our new online exclusive one horse open sleigh designer series paper. So that is why I chose a snowflake, which is kind of silly um, at this point in time in the calendar, but that's, that was my thinking behind that. Alrighty. So here is what we are going to do. Let me just tuck my catalog down there right next to me on the floor. We are going to make this really pretty um, snowflake watercolor background. Okay. And I just did this on a smaller piece today um, just to make sure it would honestly look halfway decent and not be a total fail. <laughs> so that's why this piece is a little bit small. And you'll notice these edges here. That's just where I had the tape um, to hold it down. So what you are going to need to learn how to do this technique is some watercolor paper. And actually, I had no idea the difference between hot pressed watercolor paper and cold pressed watercolor paper. But this particular technique requires hot pressed watercolor paper. The difference is the way it is manufactured and then the surface is a lot smoother with hot pressed watercolor paper. The cold pressed watercolor paper has a little more um, like nooks and crannies, should I say. Sort of like, um, it's not quite as smooth, it's a little rougher. And for this technique, we really want that water to spread out and the ink to spread with the water. So the hot pressed is your better option for this technique. Now, I just had um, some hot pressed that I picked up uh, honestly, I think Amazon, yeah, it was from Amazon. So that is what we're going to use today. Alrighty, let me show you how easy it is to do this. Now, first of all, you need something to attach your paper to, to do your work. And this is, you can probably recognize this, this is the back of one of our designer series paper packs. So I've just been using this piece of cardboard as my sort of work area this week as I've been playing with this technique. And then we're going to need our inks. So for this piece, we are going to use Crumb Cake and then Boho Blue and then the final snowflake we stamp on top for the detail is going to be Misty Moonlight. And I came up with those colors because honestly, I looked on the back here of the One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper and I just pulled out the colors that are listed right there. <laughs> I didn't have to think at all, which is good. So we are going to need our snowflake stamp, okay? a scrubby or a chamois. And then here is our piece of um, our watercolor paper. And then we are going to make the card and back it up with this piece of designer series paper. 
And our card base is going to be crumb cake. Okay. I forgot last week was our first um, Saturday in July. And I didn't help have you help me create. So we're going to play a little catch up here and do that today because I just completely forgot. Hey, Lisa, how are you? Hope you're doing well. I'm sure it's pretty warm where you are as well. All right, so that is our third color. This is our second. This is going to be our first color. Now, let me mention that for this technique, a photopolymer stamp works much, much better, okay? Because you can see through it. So you know exactly where to place that image. So that is tip number one is use a photopolymer because it is just so much easier for you to see where you are placing your images and then getting this little effect with all of this color running. You should also have um, a little spritz bottle of water. So this one's been acting up, so I brought in this big one. This is my plant mister, just in case this one acts up today. And then I have a little tray here of some water and just some paint brushes if I want to coax that um, ink out a little more into this middle area as we go along. I do have the new water painters and you know me, I cannot find them. It's also helpful to have um, your heat tool ready. It just helps speed it up if you can heat in between each step. Alrighty, so first things first, we are just gonna take our piece of watercolor paper and I just did this um, four by four and a half, okay? And the reason I did it that size is that my paper is nine by 12. <laughs> so I could evenly get it cut into um, even pieces here. We're gonna just take a little bit of painter's tape Okay, go along the top there. We do want to tape all four sides down to this paper. I didn't for this little guy, because I was in a hurry, and I can see how it's a little bumpy along those sides. So don't skip that step. Definitely tape all four sides down. And we're going to be trimming this panel down slightly, so we're not going to worry too much about where those tape lines are. Alrighty, let me find another one here. Where is this end? There we are. I don't know. There's just something about playing with paint and color and a messy technique that just screams my name. I was always the one that loved, you know, like playing with messy, <laughs> messy art techniques. I don't know. I don't know what it is about me, but I just love doing it. And watercolor is one of my favorites. Alrighty. It is also helpful to keep a little piece of paper towel nearby. Alrighty. So our first color, again, is going to be crumb cake. So I'm going to open up the ink pad and just slide that right there and put our stamp down. I'm finished with the tape now. Let me just get that completely off the table. And we can put the ink, I mean the um, stamp pad, or stamp set down. We're gonna need this handy because we're gonna have to clean our stamp in between each layer, okay? So, hey Maria. Oh, you're coming home from vacation. Oh, I hope you had a good time. I saw some of your pictures. It looked absolutely lovely. My um, nephew and his family are down on vacation now. I just saw their post earlier this morning. So they must be swapping places with you. <laughs> so we're going to take our big paintbrush here. And we are just going to put water completely over the front of this piece of hot pressed watercolor paper. 
Now, if you want to leave an area to stamp a sentiment, don't cover the whole thing. Just cover the area that you want to have your, your uh, design. All right, so we are inking up our stamp in crumb cake. And then we're just gonna mist it lightly. And I know it is really gonna look like a hot mess when we lift this up because we have wet watercolor paper, ink, and more water. All right, that is what it's supposed to look like. In between each time we do this, we do have to clean off the stamp and you can already see some of that ink is already bleeding out there. I need to add a little more water up here to coax these guys to do the same thing. That is what we want to do. We're not going to really see a distinct um, snowflake shape this time because we really want that to spread out. And what's interesting is you can kind of see what the ink is made up of because I'm seeing some pinks coming out and um, it's really cool. It's really cool. All right, ink it up again. Give it a little spritz because you're adding a little more water. I'm going to put the next one down here. Okay, there we go. It has some bubbles. That's fine. Give that a little time to like start absorbing. Clean off your stamp again. Ink it up. I'm going to coax some of this out with, um, whoops, give it a spritz with uh, the paintbrush in just a hot minute there. I'm just going to get all of these crumb cakes down first, okay? If you have some bubbles on there, no problem. They will pop. Clean it, ink it, spritz it, stamp it. What was that game <laughs> years ago? <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. Okay, so I am just going to add a little more water here because I'm talking a lot. <laughs> My paper is drying a little bit sooner than I want it to. So I am just going to kind of coax that ink out of there to run a little bit more. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to do a couple more. All right. There we are. That's going to kind of coax that out. I am actually just going to give this a hot spritz right there. All right, clean your stamp, ink it, and then spritz it again. And I need one kind of coming in from up here. Okay, that's really wet now, but that is okay because it's going to blend it out, clean it. Ink it, spritz it, stamp it. All right, we're going to clean it again. Okay, so if we want to, I need to blend that out a little bit. There we go. Okay. So that is our first layer of ink. I like doing two of each of the blending colors um, and then doing one of our final color. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my heat tool real quickly. It is gonna be a little noisy, I apologize for that. But I'm gonna just speed this up. Oh, and Maria, the brown ink was uh, is crumb cake. Okay, so it's crumb cake. And then next we're gonna do boho blue. And then finally we're gonna do misty moonlight on top. All right, so let me hit this with the heat tool real quickly, cover your ears. <laughs> Might be a little loud. Okay, I'm gonna let that 
part dry. Let me lift this up so you can kind of see. Let me scroll my laptop up so I know that I'm in the right area. So let's see if Facebook is always a couple of a, like a minute or so behind. So I just want you to see the various colors that are coming out of that first layer of crumb cake. You can kind of see a little bit of like a pink right up in there. And of course you can see the brownish and there's even just a little tinge of green, okay? We are gonna do that same thing again. I love doing it two times for the base layers because it gives you a little more opportunity to spread out that ink in between your images. All right, so we have our chamois again. We're gonna do the same thing. We are going to, whoops, where's my little spritzer? We are going to spritz it. Okay, this time we're spritzing the paper because we don't want to brush the water because that would make a huge watercolor <laughs> background and we wouldn't have any detail. So we're going to ink it, spritz it, and because we're using photopolymer, we can see right through it to stamp right on top of there. Okay, and then clean it. Now we're going to ink it, spritz the, the stamp, look right through there, try to get it sort of somewhat on top, stamp it, clean it, ink it, spritz it. This one really bled, so I'm just going to take my best guess of where that is. Stamp it, <laughs> clean it. Ink it, spritz it, stamp it, and clean it. Two more. Ink it, spritz it, stamp it, and clean it. I should also mention line art is what you are looking for with your imagery. Okay, last one. So stamp it, spritz it, stamp it, and now clean it. Okay, we are finished with our crumb cake. I am just gonna coat some of that ink to blend a little bit more. I'm gonna just give it a little more spritz in there in the corners and then take my teeny tiny paintbrush and I'm kind of guiding that ink to spread where I want it. This one really needs to, whoops, water. This one needs to go up here into the corner. And this one needs a little more water too. So you'll notice that the ink will just kind of flow wherever the water is, but there are times I need to like give a little encouragement here with a little more water. Okay, I think that looks good for our base layer of crumb cake. All right, so I have to hit this again with um, the heat tool because I don't want um, the boho blue and the crumb cake to mix so much on the piece of paper, if that's making sense. I'll explain it in a quick second. Let's just hit this with a heat tool, hopefully. It won't take long to dry this baby up. Okay, we are good to go. Now, we really wanna make sure we get this stamp nice and clean. And next, we're gonna open up our second color. So your first color is always the lightest color in your trio. Your second color is gonna be your mid-tone. So that's gonna be our boho blue right here, okay? We are gonna do the same thing 
all over again. So let's ink this. I'm gonna lightly spritz this again, just to activate that watercolor paper. So we're gonna ink it. Take your stamp. I usually spritz it over my scrubby here, <laughs> just to avoid a lot of mess. Stamp it. Okay, let that be, and then clean it. Now you can see, look at that, that river of water right there. Look how that blue is blending up there. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, ink it, spritz it, stamp it, and clean it. Ink it, spritz it, <clears throat> stamp it, and clean it, ink it, spritz it, stamp it, and then clean it, two more, ink it, whoops, spritzed my thumb that time, spritz it, stamp it, and clean it. I can see I need a little more water down there because you can see how it is not running as much. I'll get to that in a quick second. Ink it, spritz it, stamp it, and then clean it. Okay, so let's coax this blue right here with a little river of water. Let's coax that to run into the space in between our snowflake images. And you will notice that not I am not always lining these images up perfectly. It's not like you need a stamp positioning tool to do this because once you have the backgrounds done, the backgrounds are really gonna be kind of runny um, images. And then it's the final stamp when you um, do our final color on dry paper that kind of ties it all together. So I know right now you're thinking, holy moly, this is, <laughs> this is a hot mess right here, Nance. Don't worry, it's gonna get better. All right, so I like the way that looks. I am gonna set this color with the heat tool one more time. We're gonna do another layer of this. Oh, hey, Nancy, Lillibridge and Rita and Heather. How are you guys today? I hope you're doing well. Staying inside in some air conditioning, right? Okay, look at that, isn't that lovely? <laughs> it's gonna be really pretty, I promise you, when we're done. We are doing the same thing all over again, so I'm making sure we start with a clean stamp again. All right, let's spritz our paper. And did you notice when I was using the heat tool, sometimes if you had like a little pool of water and ink, you could direct that um, pool to move by our heat tool, okay? it kind of. It's not a blow dryer so much, but it does move the water a little bit. All right, let me move the heat tool over here. We have everything set up, so let's just lightly spritz that again and make sure I get the corners this time and the edges. All right, we're gonna do this quickly. Say it with me. <laughs> Ink it, spritz it. Stamp it, clean it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can only tell you guys, I do say this to myself in my head every time I do it, so. Yep, that's me. 
crazy lady. All right, that is right there. You can see with this layer, we're getting a little more of a detail look to our snowflakes. Layer that right on top. This is the last time we're going to have our watercolor paper be wet. Okay, so clean it, so ink it, spritz it, stamp it, clean it. And then ink it, spritz it, whoops, missed. Stamp it and clean it. I wasn't sure if I had done that one yet or not, so it got double duty in case I did. And then one last time, ink it, spritz it, stamp it, and clean it. All right, I'm not going to add any more water to this because I kind of look like that look. I am just going to coax some of this ink to blend in this area, which looks a little bit um, too white for me. We're going to be trimming this down too, but I just want to coax a little bit of that ink out. We have a big puddle there. There we go. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. You can see this time the water uh, on the paper is causing that ink to run really nicely. I'm going to do the same thing here because we kind of have a white spot here. Okay, there we go. I think that's pretty much covering some things up. That looks pretty good to me. All right, this is going to be the final time we dry it. So we really need to make sure it's dry, dry, dry. So close your ears again. Oh, <laughs> Nancy, you going to be saying that? Yeah, S ink it, spritz it, stamp it, clean it. I know. It could be a new Hallmark movie. <laughs> oh, the new Hallmark Christmas movie. Oh, okay. Well, Maria, the funny thing is, and I'm not sure which one is the new one, but um, when I went to see Wicked in March of 2020, right before the pandemic closed everything down, the actress who played Glinda in the, the um, U.S. touring company um, made a, a Hallmark movie that's supposed to come out sometime this year. So I'm not sure which one it is, um, but just, I don't know why that popped into my head, but yeah, she's, yeah, she's moved on to Hallmark movies now too. Alrighty, let me hit this with the heat tool one last time. Okay, that feels dry to me. Now, this is the difference between one layer and two layers. For this first one, I only did one layer of crumb cake, one layer of boho blue, and then one layer of misty moonlight. So we will be able to compare the two. This one has a greater depth of color than this one does. All right, let's move our water spritzer out of the way. We do not need that anymore. Now you want to make sure your paper is dry. Now you're going to open up your darkest color. In this case we are using Misty Moonlight. Our stamp is clean. This time we won't have to do our little rhyme. <laughs> we
We just need to ink and stamp, ink and stamp. Alrighty. So we are inked up. You, this time you do want to take a little bit more time and try to line up your image. And then you are right over top of all those previous layers of color. There we go. I know it's crazy. I'm using a snowflake in July, but I wanted it to coordinate with our new One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper as the online exclusives are now live. So there we go. And then this one really had a nice blending of the colors. Love it, love it, love it. One last one down here, right there. So this last time you can see we were just stamping and we didn't have to clean in between or anything like that. Okay, so that is what that looks like. And I am just gonna let that dry a quick second. Let me hit it again. Every time you do this technique, it's different, needless to say. <laughs> needless to say, is there a name for this technique? What was it called? I actually was inspired by somebody on YouTube, and I can't remember what she called it. Lisa, I'll have to look that up again and then post it right below, post the name right below your, um, your comment here. I call it just fun and I can make a mess. <laughs> like today when I, before I went live and um, I went out in the kitchen to get some paper towels <laughs> and I was joking. I said, I'm a hot mess. And my husband's like, what did you spill now? And I'm like, nothing yet, but you know, I think paper towels are in order for this technique. So you can see you pull away your painter's tape And you do want to use new painter's tape each time, especially if you have gone over the edge like we did here. Oops, hang on, I had a pop-up come up on my laptop. I want to make sure everything is still showing well. Okay, so um, you can see where we stamped over the edge here. So it is a good idea just to have new painter's tape each time when you do that because, um, if not, you might have that color bleeding into your project and you may be using different colors for your project. Okay, so look at those colors. Oh my goodness, I love them. I love them, love them, love them. You can see where the crumb cake was here and here and then the different variations of the blue. I don't know, I just, I love a good messy technique. So let's look at the two of these. This one I have my snowflakes a little more spread out than I do here. So we have a little more white space, which I kind of like actually. So like I said, every time you do it, it's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna move my, my, uh, <laughs> my piece of cardboard on the floor. I wish I could say it was some sort of fancy schmancy art tool, but it's a hunk of cardboard from the back of a retired pack of designer series paper. All right, so we are gonna trim this down a little bit. So this started out as four. So I'm gonna trim a quarter inch off this edge. Okay, so we get rid of that line that was by the caused by the tape. Let's do another quarter inch off. So now we have a three and a half inch left. And let's cut a quarter inch off of here just to get rid of that border because I think it looks so much better. And then another quarter of an inch. Okay. Oh my goodness, I love it. So what we are left with, and you can start at any size that you want, we are left with a four by three and a half. 
Okay, we're left with a four by three and a half panel. Now let's bring in our crumb cake card base again. And we're going to layer this on to our designer series paper. So what I am going to do now, this is the, the pattern where it looks like you are looking down from the top of a tree. Um, so you are either a bird or a squirrel or someone um, chased you up a tree. <laughs> A bear chased you up a tree, one or the other, I'm not sure. I'm calling this the bird's eye view, but I kind of laugh because I'm like, oh, there's footprints there. Hmm. Wonder who chased me up the tree. But let's see, I want this to be, we're gonna use the reverse side. I want the horizontal stripes, not the stripes being um, vertical. So I'm gonna put my paper, into my paper trimmer this way. And I'm gonna cut this at four and then five and one quarter. So that's gonna be our layer right there on the front. Okay, we're gonna layer that right there. And then we're going to put our snowflake panel here. But I feel like we need I don't know, a little something something there. We're gonna put a greeting down here. Um, or should we, <laughs> I'm thinking, or should we <clears throat> cut that into thirds and have that staggered? All right, I'm gonna let you guys decide. So put, cut it or don't cut it in the comments then you're going to let me know how we're going to do this. Are we going to cut this piece into thirds and then put them on the front as three separate pieces? Or are we going to leave this piece whole? So cut it or don't cut it. So if you're still with me, throw a comment there in Facebook as to what we should do there. And I will wait for a second. Rita is saying, cut it. All right. I think we should too. Let's see if anybody else has a vote. So right now it's saying, cut it. Let's see. Anybody else? I'll give you another couple seconds. I need to take a sip. Whew. Using this heat tool, I swear I'm getting a hot flash. I'm going to blame the heat tool. Not my edge. All right, Lisa's saying cut it, Heather's saying cut it. All right, we're gonna cut it. Let's bring up our paper cutter again. Oops, there's my cord. And I almost knocked the camera off, but that's okay. My phone. All right, so this is, of course, four. So we need to do one and one third if we're gonna make it even. Hmm. I'm thinking a minute. Beth is saying cut it also. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I want to do like one and one half and one and one half is going to be three. And then we'd have a one. I think I want to do it not evenly. So let's do one and one half. Okay, another one and one half. We have to keep it in the right order though, right? And we're gonna have a leftover piece of one because I'm thinking if that last little piece is down the bottom, we can put a greeting. All right, those are gonna be lined up like that. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. That way I didn't have to do really, you know, big math <laughs> online here. All right, and then we can put, we will put our greeting over top of that. I think that will look really good. Okay, so I am going to get some Tombow two-way, or um, Tombow multi-purpose liquid glue. And I'm gonna put this on the back. Whoa, this is a new container, can you tell? Whew. So let's put one here. 
and I'm just kind of lining up the uh, edges to be somewhat similar. I'm just eyeballing it. Let's do the second one. Let's do the one at the top. Same way. And again, I am just eyeballing the top and the right and the left. Okay. To be even. And now we can just kind of cut them cut the difference right there in the middle, right? Okay, so now we're gonna put this one on. And I do recommend a strong adhesive for the watercolor paper because it is a lot thicker than our regular um, cardstock. Oops. All right, that is looking good. All right, let's grab a sentiment. Let me find where I, where on the floor did I throw the stamp set? Right here. All righty, we could do a, we did the season of life last time. We could do a thanks. That's really big though, isn't it? We could do the thanks in between there. All right, I'm gonna let you guys pick the greeting. It's either gonna be thanks or thinking of you. So let me know, thanks or thinking of you. In the comments, whichever one you would like me to do. Thinking of you. Okay, we have one for thinking of you. I need to reach over here and get a block. So, so far it's thinking of you. I think thinking of you is the winner. All right. And we are going to just cut a little. I'm trying to think. Hmm. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Thinking of you. All right. Heather says thinking of you as well. So let's do the thinking of you. Lisa says thanks, but so far we have two to one, unless we have a, a tie break or a, a tie <laughs> by somebody else. All right, let's, I'm trying to think. I think we can use um, a little piece here. Let's grab, let's grab some boho blue, or if we're putting it on crumb cake, let's do the greeting on the back of a piece of crumb cake. That's even better because I have the crumb cake paper right next to me. <laughs> that makes it easier. There we go. So there's a little strip of crumb cake. Let me measure thinking of you. We will probably only need a three quarter of an inch strip there. So let's just cut this scrap down to three quarters of an inch. So I've been trying to organize and clean my craft supplies this week. I finally, 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 we're just gonna leave this big for a second. I finally separated our, my, um, my current with my retired. So I have that all done. So let's open this up. We're gonna do the Misty Moonlight again, the darker color. And let's do the thinking of you. Right here, let me grab my foam mat because this is a photopolymer, so. There we go. And I'm gonna do it right there in that piece. And then we can decide how we are going to do those edges. All right, so we're gonna have the thinking of you there. So, should we, I haven't put this on just yet. Yeah, I like that right there. I think we're gonna flag that little edge just with our snips and then have that little edge flat up against there. What do you guys think? Is that good? Should we flag it or should I just tear it with my fingers? 
if we're making a mess, we might as well make a big mess and just tear it. But let me know if you want me to flag it. Are we going to use our scissors or fingers? Say scissors or fingers. <laughs> and then we will finish this up. Oh, you know what I want to do? We're going to add some wink. So, scissors or fingers? Tear it, tear it. Oh, oh, we have scissors and tear it. So it's a tie right now. Let's see. Do we have a third person still watching? Have I bored you all to death yet? Let's see. Scissors or tear it. Heather is saying tear it. All right. We are just going to go with it. We're just going to tear this edge here with our fingers just to have it looking a little bit organic there. I kind of like that, actually. There we are. We're going to put it over to the side, though. I think if it's in the middle, it's too matchy-matchy. All right. Before we layer all this on, though, I want to bring back in... Let's keep our greeting there. I'm going to bring back in my little... Um, work surface here. I feel like we need to spritz, not spritz, we need to just splatter, some Wink of Stella, okay? It's just giving it, so my Wink is working. You can see right there, it is in the, in the brush tip here. And I know it's probably hard to see this on the camera, but you can just always take off your lid and either hit it, or you can actually use the lid. That gives you a little more control over where your spritzes, your spritzes go. We're just doing a little bit of wink, just trying to give it a little glisten. So I don't want to actually use the brush on here because um, the liquid in the wink might make the um, the darker blue, the Midnight Muse, that might make it um, start to run. So I don't want to do that. I just want to give it a little, little shimmer there. All right. You know, if we're making a mess, we might as well like do it. We're committing to it today. All right, that is looking good. I know it probably does not show up on the camera very well, um, but I will try to take a picture later on today and try to get that little that little bit of glisten there. Okay, all right. So now this is ready to go onto the front. I'm gonna put this flat here and then we can pop this bad boy up. There we go. Just a thin line of our Tombow multi-purpose glue. Oops. Oh god. I had a little blob that that uh was already dried on there. Thin line around all four sides here. And now I'm going to put that right on the front layer. All right, one last thing. My brain is thinking. Let's see if I can find it though. So here is another one last thing for you guys to decide. Okay, whoops. So here's some linen thread. And I'm gonna make just a quick and dirty nest here. I'm not gonna cut it yet. So are you saying nest underneath there or no nest? So that would be kind of the look for the nest. This would be the look for the no nest. So Rita is saying nest. <laughs> I don't know if that's really called a nest. That's just, that's what I call it. I'm not sure. Heather is saying no nest. Uh-oh, we need one more. Is there one more person even still watching? 
I have it says four here on Facebook. So let's see who is going to be the tiebreaker. Let me pull out some dimensionals. Let me move stuff so I can get to my drawer with the dimensionals in it. Is what I should say. Let's finish up that sheet. Okay, move that punch. All right, so we have nest, no nest, and Lisa is saying nest. Okay, so let's do a nest this time. going to need some tear and tape real quickly. Sorry, I have so many things blocking that little drawer. So if we're doing a nest, I'm just going to put a little bit of tear and tape right here where we're going to put our nest. But I'm going to tear the piece so it's not quite as big as our greeting. Okay. So there is our tear and tape. Let's grab our, take your pick tool so I can pick this up. We can get that. And now, this is my non-official way of making a nest. <laughs> I kind of do it four fingers and then three fingers and then I just kind of smish it into that adhesive. And then I sort of play with it and see where I want my little loops to go. I think that's a big enough nest for this project. Cut that off of the spool. Let's see, I want that loop to go up there. Yep, I think that's good. All right. So I'm putting all of these little threads right into that. Now I'm gonna cover it up with another little piece, just so they kind of stay where I want them to be. Okay. And we are going to pop this up with dimensionals, but I am gonna just peel off this backing as well to help stick the dimensionals down to the nest. This part's a little harder because we have so much stuff underneath of it there. There we go. Okay. Alrighty, let's just find some dimensionals. We are going to finish using these up right here. This time I'm going to put the dimensionals right on top there. And I'm just using some edge pieces. Okay. Grab my take my pick tool once again. Peel off those backings. Usually I would put the dimensionals on the back of the piece that I'm sticking. But this time I'm just going to do it that way because I know we're going to cover that up. I think that is looking good. What do you guys think? So when we started today, I had no idea what our card was going to look like, right? <laughs> you guys for helping me create because I forgot last week was the first Saturday of the month. Um, for the inside, what I will do is I will cut a piece of um, Misty Moonlight to coordinate with this um designer series paper here and then I'm going to layer it with um, a panel of white. Oh you can see that Wink of Stella a little bit in the light. It's just very fine. I'm not sure. It's probably not going to show up on Facebook but I will try to get a good picture at an angle where the light is reflecting. So this is our card for this week. I hope you enjoyed that technique. I will look up the name of that um, and post it right here as well. But yeah, you never know what you're going to learn when you're just, you know, surfing YouTube and looking for messy watercolor <laughs> techniques. That's actually what I put in the search bar was watercolor techniques 
Um, and I think I even said messy watercolor techniques because I didn't really care if, if I made a mess or not. So um, if you have commented or like, love, share this, I will put your name in the drawing. Once I finish this reorganization of my table here, I will be picking the winners for the cards um, from the past few weeks and then sending them out to you. So this is the card for this week where we did that messy watercolor technique with hot pressed watercolor paper. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comments and I will get back to you. Also, um, the online exclusives are now live. Um, the one stamp set featuring um, Hanukkah greetings and imagery is being redesigned. So there will be a slight delay until that is available, but it is coming. So I will keep you posted on that one, but everything else I believe is still in stock. I was able to order um, a truck, the truck punch and the truck stamp set. So that will be here to me, um, maybe the end of next week if it gets out quickly, but it might be the following week. So either next Saturday or the following Saturday, we will do some projects with that bundle. But thank you for joining me so much. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is going on. There was a paper pumpkin refill sale for the 6th and 7th, but that is now over. But online exclusives, oh, the clearance rack has been refreshed. So there may be some items in the clearance rack that may be of interest to you. And I'm trying to think of what the other thing was. Let me scroll back. Oh, we have a new kit. Oh, bonus days. How can I forget about bonus days? So during July, from July 6th until the end of July, when you place an order in my online store of $50 or more, you will get a bonus day coupon sent to you in your email box, email inbox for $5 that you can then redeem in August. So check that out. I would be happy to help you place an order if you need some help or if you don't do things online, I understand I can help you with that as well. So Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great weekend. And you didn't think I'd like tearing the label? Oh, you do. I know. Well, I wasn't sure either, Rita. I think because this whole, the vibe of this card is just kind of so, um, I don't know. What's the word? Not messy. Just natural, organic. That's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> organic that it, it, it kind of works, doesn't it? Just the tearing of the edge works. So I will finish this off with the inside and then um, I will um, do the drawings as soon as I finish cleaning off the desk. I have one more stack of stuff to go through and then I can get back to um, the normal stuff and awarding those cards to everybody who participates in the lives. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Have a great weekend and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.